Breaking news. Elon Musk has announced that launch approval will take place in time for launch on Friday, November 17th. What's great is that this also fits with SpaceX's plans for a target Starship launch date of November 17th. According to a tweet pinned on the company's X page on November 11th, congratulations to Elon Musk and the entire SpaceX team for this huge victory. Of course, the journey to turn this dream into reality is not easy, especially in the context of the relationship between the FAA and SpaceX, which has always been very tense. So what did they do to make the FAA change its mind? Discuss everything about this in today's episode of TechMap. On November 13th, on the Cameron County website, there was a document regarding the temporary closure of Boca Chica Beach and State Highway 4 related to the Starship test launch. Accordingly, the official launch date of Starship has been set for November 17th, while the alternative dates will be on the following days, 18 and 19 respectively. At the same time, SpaceX also notified the United States Coast Guard of a test scheduled for November 17th with backup dates of November 18th and November 20th daily at their facility located south of Brownsville, Texas, near Boca Chica Beach. This current news coincides with SpaceX's announcement on November 11th of Starship's target launch date of November 17th. At the time of this announcement, the company even pinned it to the top of its X pages along with an interesting video. The video has also appeared on the company's YouTube channel, and to heighten fan excitement, SpaceX has even scheduled an official live stream for IFT2 next Friday. I don't know what others think about the recent moves of Elon Musk and his space company. To me, it sounds like a declaration of war against the unjustified silence of both the FAA and FWS. SpaceX expressed a strong stance in a Senate hearing in October to push the FAA to process the work faster, and it has also actively cooperated with FWS to speed up the environmental review process. However, everything has not still been improved significantly. The FAA said it concluded its safety review of the SpaceX Starship on October 31st, but is still awaiting the results of the FWS completing its consultation process before completing the environmental review portion of the permit review. And how is the result? Up to now, what we receive is still silence. The relationship between SpaceX and the FAA has always been very tumultuous and space enthusiasts will never forget SpaceX's more than year-long battle just to win the license to launch Starship for the first time. And up to now, more than anyone else, Elon Musk and his colleagues are clearly aware of how great the difficulties they are facing are. Faced with these obstacles, the Texas government cannot ignore them. Texas congressmen are also active in pressing for SpaceX's Starship launch approval. Indeed, Congressman Tony Gonzalez and Vicente Gonzalez sent a letter on November 10th to Agency Director Martha Williams calling for a timely environmental review of the company's launch operations. The United States is currently in a space race with the rest of the world, and the federal government should not hinder public companies as they develop and push the United States to remain a leader in the space exploration realm, the congressman wrote. It is of the utmost importance that FWS makes their environmental review decision sooner rather than later. Gonzalez, a San Antonio Republican, and Gonzalez, a McAllen Democrat, said the regulatory delay greatly impacts SpaceX's operations in South Texas and potentially hurts the region's economy. SpaceX is one of the largest employers in the Rio Grande Valley, employing over 1,700 people and is a major economic driver in the area, they wrote. A further delay in the environmental review will continue to harm the small businesses and tourism industry of South Texas. The agency didn't immediately respond Saturday to questions about the congressional letter, but Bozick said Wednesday the agency was still working on its review. There's no doubt that government approval is the final hurdle the company must overcome if it wants to get Starship back in the skies. That's why Starship launch date announcements always include the words pending final regulatory approval or assuming regulatory approval. 
The reason I can say that is because in terms of technical preparation for the vehicle, SpaceX worked very quickly and now they have almost completed everything. Late last month, the public took the chance to witness activity surrounding the Starship rocket, which started with a test that can only be described as a wet dress rehearsal. This test was essential as it involved fully loading the stack with nearly 5,000 tons of liquid oxygen and liquid methane, simulating the actual launch conditions. The test culminated in a full launch countdown rehearsal, stopping just before engine startup. SpaceX also tested the water deluge system at the launch pad, which is the new design to protect its OLM and the Starship rocket from the immense power of the first stage booster's 33 Raptor engines. During the test flight on April 20th, the booster's engine plume carved a huge crater beneath the launch pad, kicking up debris and chunks of concrete that fell back onto the Starbase facility and surrounding area. That water deluge system is under review by the United States Fish and Wildlife to understand the environmental impact it may have on the animal and plant life living in the Boca Chica Wildlife Refuge surrounding SpaceX's Starbase facility. Fast forward to November, and the preparation has been coming closer to the end. On November 9th, Starship Flight Termination System, explosives are on the move and about to be installed. As you know, the FTS will be armed on Starship very close to the launch date, which raises more hope for the vehicle's flight occurring this month. Just two days later, the hot stage ring transport stand and load spreader are currently headed back to the launch complex. In addition to the water deluge system, the hot staging technique is also one of more than 1,000 tweaks, upgrades, and modifications to the rocket since the April test flight. Russian rockets, like the venerable Soyuz, have employed the hot staging technique for decades, but it's not used on any modern United States launch vehicle. On the upcoming test flight, most of the Super Heavy's 33 engines will shut down 2 minutes and 39 seconds into the launch, according to a timeline released by SpaceX. Hot staging comes two seconds later with the simultaneous ignition of the Starship upper stage and jettison of the Super Heavy booster. Obviously, for the second test flight, SpaceX has invested very carefully in preparation. Thus, it is not difficult to understand how important this test is for Elon Musk in particular and the entire space industry in general. If before the event on April 20th, Elon just set a goal that his vehicle would not blow the pad, this time he expects Starship will have a 90-minute trip worldwide ending with a re-entry and splashdown of the Starship's upper stage in the Pacific Ocean northwest of Hawaii. This is very important since Starship's ability to ace its test flight this time around will show how quickly SpaceX can move forward with everything else it wants to do with Starship. What if Starship continues to be delayed by meaningless government bureaucracy? Well, first on the company's side, are the unbearable losses due to having to compensate for the above contracts. Remember that SpaceX just made a slight profit in the first quarter of this year after many consecutive years of losses. If this situation continues, sooner or later, Elon Musk and his space business will fall into bankruptcy. Second, Starship involves important government programs. If the vehicle cannot fly in time, those programs will of course be delayed. And this seriously affects the Washington government's goal of setting foot on the moon and Mars. The worst thing is that the country that prides itself on being the winner of the 20th century space race will be defeated by an emerging opponent from the East, China, in this 21st century race. That is so embarrassing. Anyway, it's all over, and now it's time to celebrate SpaceX's victory and wait for the day the monster called Starship flies in the sky as announced. Don't forget to book your flight to Boca Chica as soon as possible before the 17th, folks, and your hotel room, too. I'm not sure if there will be any plane tickets or hotel rooms available in the next few days. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space-important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high-quality content. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.